welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Frank Creek High School correspondent, Joya Smith. We have some great stories for you this March, an expansion of the Academies of Louisville, an international visit by the Fringe Consul General, and lots of music. Plus, we have these student stories. Here at Seneca High School, these students are moving into a bright future by learning about plants and animals. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge are the five rules of dodgeball. Ballard students take the court to compete for a good cause. Hi, my name is Cash Ergen, and students and public officials have been working together to help the community. The Academies of Louisville celebrated an exciting milestone when 13 businesses signed on as partners. The new collaborations will help enhance student learning and prepare them for the future. And one, two, three, let's sign up to be an Academy of Louisville partner. We can't have kids going through the motions in our schools. What we have to have is engaged, passionate kids doing the work, and you will see that. This is such an exciting time. I'm very proud of this and can't wait to see how this continues to develop and expand in the years to come. Uh, empowered, inspired, and prepared graduates can change a village, and they're going to change our community. And these graduates from Academies of Louisville are poised and ready to do that, and we're so excited. I will graduate with a backpack of essential success skills like collaboration, teamwork, problem solving, critical thinking, leadership, and determination, all of which will carry me far beyond the doors of the Marion Seymour High School. With all the students here at Moore and all the other high schools that we have here in the room, to get the skills that they need uh, to have great jobs and to have this strong belief in their schools and in their cities that this is the kind of place to continue to build out our great city as we gain more and more prominence on the world stage. So but the real work is right here. It's the partnerships that you're celebrating today between business and schools. It's schools reaching out to business, bringing them in. It's businesses reaching back to schools and working together and figuring out how we can best prepare kids to be successful. First, we are the champion here in partnership with Kentucky Anna Works and JCPS on the Academies of Louisville. And this is a great day. We are very, very excited to arrive at this day when we sign up and really begin the work of the Academies of Louisville 2.0. <laughs> the JCPS Board of Education named Dr. Marty Polio as the new superintendent. He recently visited Shawnee High School where he started his career in the district. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. It's exciting to be back here where I first started teaching. Um, in 1997-98 visit the classroom uh, where I first started teaching so uh, that was excited for me and, and um, always happy to get back to Shawnee and see the teachers and students here. What's up buddy? How you doing man? I don't want to be the center of attention um, but it's nice to, to see so many students and teachers know about the new superintendent. I mean I think the people uh, here at Shawnee, staff and students, are excited that someone was, that was at Shawnee is now the superintendent of schools. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's great for me to have that kind of excitement. For the future Shawnee and Jefferson County, we would like to welcome you back to Shawnee. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. 21 years. Uh, seems like a long time ago, but it flew by. It seemed like just yesterday I was teaching and coaching here. The big story, bigger than the new superintendent or me being here, are the Academy partners. So I want to thank our Academy partners who are here with us from the Academies of Louisville. The biggest change of, of being here is this Academy model. Leave off a little bit of the pressure right here. All right. So you won't really have to be going that high. Good. So. And so... You know, being in that flight simulator room with the kids that are going to be um, you know, partnering and continue to partner with UPS, having kids do real world relevant experiences that cross into their core content classes. So you heard the flight instructor talk about VX, VY. It can be real similar to what you've seen in your algebra classes. So those kids then going and having career pathways, field trips, job shadows, apprenticeships. Um, so I think that's a great development that I'm um, really excited about the future of the Academies of Louisville. It's such a, a great program as you saw um, in there and uh, our business partners working with our pathways um, in the uh, Career Academy model is so important for our schools. It's always tough to predict where you're going to go but clearly I did not uh, see this happening along the way but I'm excited to be here. 
students at No Middle School combine art and activism by creating works that help spread important messages about community issues. Would anyone like to share out? And if you can't afford to have a future, then I mean, there's really no point to it. Just commending them on the fact that they are thinking outside of themselves. They're thinking about community. They're thinking about things that they can do. We're here at No Middle School. We're doing a community forum with all of my eighth grade visual arts students. When you're talking about Job Corps, what I'd like to see is like community leaders actually really mentoring our kids. It's mainly to convince people to do better in their community with um, help from these organizations and their students to encourage them to do like good in different scenarios. Art has a big impact on raising awareness about many topics like bullying, LGBT rights, and drugs. Uh, it can get the message out easier. Students decided on issues that they saw within their community and they actually uh, found organizations that worked towards helping those issues. We would not be able to do what we could do without our volunteers. They started developing projects with those organizations so they asked them if they had any needs that were arts-based needs because these are all visual arts students that we have. Uh, we did a people's history uh, poster about the first trans women to write about LGBT rights, the Stonewall rights. Bullying, it's, it affects a lot of people. It affects everyone. Working together can make a difference. Just, you know, coming together and like working hard. It's really cool to show it to someone outside of school as a Showing it to your peers is one thing, but showing it to an adult who works with the um, organization every day is amazing. It's an amazing experience. I'm extremely proud. They had to completely take charge and actually email or call these organizations and then set up times to meet and work on the projects. And so just that process alone, to see them do that was amazing and to see what came out of that. Um, also need a lot of volunteer work. Correspondent Chaz K visited Seneca High School and shows us how their FFA program is contributing to deeper learning. When you first walk into Seneca High School, it looks like any other high school. But when you look further, you find a group of students who are dedicated to learning more about plants and wildlife. Students get to participate in activities in and out of school. Students also take a deeper look into how the animals are cared for. They also learn about the different physical characteristics that make each animal unique. These students work with animals including chickens, rabbits, turtles, crabs, and more. These students are a part of an award-winning FFA program. Today, the National FFA organization remains committed to the individual student, providing a path to achievement in premier leadership, personal growth, and career success through agricultural education. The FFA advisor and teacher at Seneca High School, Bethany Mattingly, tells us why the FFA is a great impact on student lives. I decided to be an FFA advisor because of the impact it has on students. It takes the learning in the classroom and takes it completely to the next level. So students develop leadership and communication skills and skills that otherwise maybe aren't developed in the classroom. So I'm proud to be a part of that process and to be able to help my students grow beyond just what they learn in the classroom. Not only do they talk about animals, but they also learn about the importance of plants and how they impact our lives. FFA advisor and teacher at Seneca High School, Kristen Wright, explains why she became an FFA advisor. I chose to become an agriculture teacher because I just love to share the passion with agriculture and especially in an urban setting. A lot of our scholars here do not get to see animals on a daily basis and just walking to the classroom. They get to interact with the animals every single day here and then not only here at school but we also take animals to other events in the district and we have events here at Seneca where we interact with animals and teach scholars about agriculture and I think it's really important for them to understand where their food comes from, um, how it gets there and then also the value of the work that goes into that and then that way they can become better educated citizens once they get out in the public. For our kids, I'm Front Creek Correspondent Chess Cave. We have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay tuned. JCPS serves over 100,000 students, and with that, a lot of waste is generated. We need to do our part to recycle because it conserves natural resources, help the environment, and save money. When we recycle, we put less coal and gases into the power plant, which reduces the amount of toxins in the atmosphere. We, we are JCBS and we recycle. Yeah! yeah! One, two, three. Welcome to our satellite office. 
Some of the services that we will provide will be in five different departments, diversity, equity, and poverty, exceptional childhood education, student assignment, student relations, and Title I offices. Welcome back to Our Kids. I'm Front Creek High School correspondent, Julia Smith. Whitney Young Elementary hosted the French Consul General and gave him a tour of their International Baccalaureate program. We are here at Whitney Young. We are thrilled about the opportunity of bringing a second magnet program to our school. Right now we are an International Baccalaureate World School and we now have the opportunity to bring a dual language magnet here, which would be French and it would look like next school year our kindergarten students and some of our first grade students, depending on how the layout of our program, would take math and science in French. So it's just another opportunity for deeper learning. Bonjour les enfants. I am Guillaume Lacroix, the Council General of France to the Midwest. Well, I'm, uh, I'm here to visit uh, elementary school that is going to start an immersion program which is very, very important. It's important for the kids, it's important for the parents, it's important for the community, but it's also important for my country, France, because we do care about the French language. But our point is not the French language, it's language diversity. Teaching students an, a language gives them another dimension of their thinking, another way to express themselves, another way to connect with people around the world. As Monsieur Lacroix said earlier, France does not have a monopoly on French. We will be learning about learnt students in Senegal and in Haiti and Quebec across the world who speak French and being able to connect with them on a language level, on a cultural level, because we will study them and we will study how they impact our global, our global environment. I was just thrilled. It, was, it gave me chills to know that we could bring this opportunity to students right here on Muhammad Ali in West Louisville in a school that serves students who are, this is a Title I school, serving students who are qualifying for free and reduced price meals because of poverty. We are enriching our community right here and supporting our students having a global education and being able to leave here as global citizens. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci beaucoup Au revoir. et tous mes encouragements. I had a chance to see how Southern High School's Metal Academy helps prepare students for their future careers. Check it out. The Metal Academy consists of four pathways that can lead to a variety of post-secondary and career options. Computerized manufacturing and machining works with manufacturing parts of all kinds. With a major in machine tool technology, the parts you will make at the heart of the machines. Working with everything from hand tools to computer numerically controlled machines, you'll learn to make precision parts from blueprints and other specifications. You'll learn how to inspect, test, and repair parts and machines and you'll learn how to play it safe on the job. Cyber engineering is a blend of programming, cybersecurity, and hardware engineering. Students will learn to research, design, develop, and test computer systems and components. The courses provide a hands-on, real-world approach that empowers students to become the next generation of engineers and cyber professionals. JROTC prepares you for not just the military, but also for life. Students gain leadership skills and personal skills along with learning the basics of health and physical education. First aid, citizenship, map reading, cadet challenge, and marksmanship. Selected students may even go to a variety of camps during the year. Participate in color guard, drill team, rifle team, and raider team. Here at ROTC our main focus is uh, mainly citizenship, uh, leadership. Things we do to improve on that is we have a, a weekly uniform inspection which if, if you've seen the uniform, it's, uh, it's really a prideful thing that we take pride in. Manufacturing engineering technology prepares students to apply engineering, mathematical, and scientific principles to the design, development, and operational evaluation of integrated systems for managing industrial production processes, just-in-time manufacturing, industrial quality control, automation, cost analysis, and technical skills. Our pathway at Southern High School is specifically designed to prepare students to work with industrial engineers and other professionals engaged in developing and using robots. Correspondent Courtney Smith takes us to the dodgeball tournament sponsored by Ballard High School's Dance Maroon. 
Dance Maroon is a student-run organization at Ballard that raises money for pediatric cancer research. Every year, they host a dodgeball tournament to help raise money. Students and teachers participate and compete for a good cause. I'm a member on the Dance Marine Committee and I got involved because I really wanted to help kids with pediatric cancer and today we're at the dodgeball tournament raising money to help us reach our goal. These kids come in ready to go, always wanting to do everything for the kids um, with their costumes ready, their teammates ready, and they really enjoy this, this uh, dodgeball tournament. Raising money for the kids is a common phrase heard around Ballard, but what does it really mean? So we are raising money for the um, Pediatric Oncology and Hematology Department at UofL. And so we're raising money to fund the research for those events because it's all for the kids who can't get up and do things for themselves. It really brings Ballard together and it brings our students together and our staff together. And with Dance Maroon, it's just a really great time for everybody. We start straight in the summer, day one. We are trying to think of new ways to fundraise, fun things for the kids to do to participate all year long, trying to find new and inventive ways to raise money, all for the kids. Dance Maroon is a great way to stay involved at Ballard, and the students know it's always for the kids. For the kids. For the kids. Pleasure Ridge Park Special Olympics team had a chance to conquer the slopes on their annual ski trip. Caitlin Druck brings us the story. While we're on the ski trip, on the first night on Sunday, they do an opening ceremony where they have um, ski partners from the Cincinnati Ski Club as well as athletes. They ski down the slopes with the torch um, and, American, and several American flags, and then they bring the torch down, and then they give it to a snowshoeing athlete, and then they bring it up on the deck and light the torch, and they go through the whole Olympic ceremony song first day, the students that have never skied before, as well as the ones that have, um, get paired up with either peer tutors that we've taken or ski partners from, like Ms. Miller said, the ski club from Cincinnati um, and surrounding locations. They come in and they take the kids one-on-one -on -one, um, out onto the slopes and teach them. They all go back out and they get actually time trialed in each of their events. They do their competitions, and then after that, we do the. They have an award ceremony. I think it challenges the students to get out of their comfort zone, along with their parents, and allowing them to give them more independence to do things to see what they're capable of doing. I think it's a big deal to make them more independent, and they feel like they become more independent. When we go through there, all the people that are there skiing just on their own, um, they stop and they applaud our athletes. And, and respect them and, and give them that time and it makes them really feel good. I think surprised at themselves and what they can, can accomplish. We have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay with us. I'm neurosurgeon Shad Bidiwala, Seneca High School class of 1989. I am JCPS. I'm Ballard High School junior Brianna Owens, and I've been selected for the Wharton School of Business Summer Institute. I am JCPS. I'm Marshall Goldsmith, Valley High School class of 1967. Executive leadership coach, I am JCPS. I'm Justin Cornwell, Eastern High School class of 2007, and I played a young Muhammad Ali. I am JCPS. We, we are JCPS. Welcome back to Our Kids. I'm Fern Creek High School correspondent, Julia Smith. The Geeing Young Artist Program gave a jazz quintet from y Pass the chance to shine during a performance at Lincoln Elementary. We're here at a Lincoln Elementary, Lincoln Performing art school and uh, we're going to play for the fourth grade class a little educational program about jazz. I am Nicholas Rechtenwald. This is part of the Geens Young Artists Program, uh, the residency where I am um, going around to schools and kind of doing some musical uh, education performances I'm with uh, Spur of the Moment, my jazz combo. We're 
we're going to play um, some standards, and really we're just going to talk about how the jazz ensemble works, how the jazz combo communicates through music, um, and how we communicate with the audience. Performing to me is kind of the way that we um, we express feelings to the listeners, and so when I play music, I'm trying to I'm trying to take my innermost thoughts and, and put it into somebody else's in somebody else's ear. It's exciting. I you know I, I remember myself in, in fourth grade um, trying to be inspired and trying to, to, to practice, and it is hard as as a as a kid. Um, so we hope we can inspire them to be the next generation of musicians. For me, music was is around me all the time. I had musical parents and I was raised in that household. But really it was the performers, the, the professionals came in you know, to, to, to the classroom, to the city, to perform um, in the local you know, centers and halls that really got me inspired in, in music. My plans in the future are definitely music related. I'm hoping to go to college for music and actually for both jazz and classical because I, I just I love them both. We just hope that we can uh, give them a good time and hope that they like what they hear. Correspondent Cash Jurgen shows us how the Fern Creek Computer Club is restoring older machines. The computer science program in Fern Creek has been a gateway to success for up-and-coming computer scientists. Led by teacher Scott Haran, the program continues this tradition by getting students involved in the community. The program and Greg Fisher, mayor of Louisville, have been involved in a partnership aimed at destroying the digital divide, which is defined as an economic inequality with access and use of technology. Haran shares his opinions on the partnership and what it means to computer science. Mm -hmm. This partnership with the city has been a really good partnership in that it's helped us ramp up a program we've had going for four years. We've always built computers for our kids, but we've never built, had enough computers to build for other people's kids. So this year, uh, we've taken that a step up, and because of the publicity that's gaining us, we have the capability to get kids jobs for the summer. This partnership involves refurbishing computers with hardware or operating system fixes. These computers are then given to families in need. Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher gives his outlook on what the partnership means to the city and the plans for the future. So this is a real win-win for everybody. The most important contributors, however, are the students. These kids have worked hard creating these systems and have enjoyed the process. Alexis Maddox, a senior and member of the Girls Who Code, gives her description on the meaning of the program as a student. Ever since I started the Computer Academy program with Mr. Haran, I have learned how to code in Python and Logo, and I have learned how to reimage an old computer to become refurbished for new families and stuff like that, and how to put new software on it so other families can learn about computer science and improve their knowledge as well in schools and outside of school. Student Taylor Carmichael also shares what CSU means to her. Because of this program, I thought about going a lot into a technical, um, a technical business and dealing with a lot of computers and giving and fixing computers and giving them to kids. It seems like students in JCPS are enjoying a life of tech and giving. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Cash Yerkin. Correspondent Kelly Cushing shows us how students at Carruthers Middle School are taking aim at their future. Mr. Blast's archery team shoots in the cafeteria. This unique setup allows arrows to fly. The targets go in front of the tarps and the bows are lined up behind the students. The fun happens in their own cafeteria. Any Carruthers student can join the archery team as long as they are in good academic standings, see average, and have good conduct. The team competes in a total of nine tournaments a year. Depending on the tournament, the team will compete against anywhere between 12 to 30 different teams. The current archery team has 43 students from 6th grade to 8th grade. For practice and tournaments, each archer will shoot five arrows per round. 
three rounds at 10 meters and three rounds at 15 meters. Scoring is based on where each arrow is on the target. I think my favorite part of archery is the competitions, like the, how it's competitive. My favorite thing about the class and the sport itself would be working with a team because you can learn from your mistakes. I feel like I can go far with it. Sixth graders Veronica Ramirez and Stavell Anderson have both been in this class for a while and they both find joy in their unique classes. You can um, learn from your mistakes and that you can learn a life skill. I would recommend it because it's, you know, it's like life skills and anything. There's no drawbacks in this class, so forget about that last arrow. Only the next one counts. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Kelly Cushing. Correspondent Brianna Lair had a chance to follow the recent visit of Louisville Orchestra conductor Teddy Abrams to Fern Creek High School. Fern Creek Orchestra is showing what they got for Teddy Abrams. Usually he has to be in the Louisville Orchestra to get advice from Teddy Abrams, but not at Fern Creek. Aside from just talking to the class, he also conducted with them to help them out and to give them real life orchestra experience. The Fern Creek Orchestra kids were so excited that Teddy Abrams came to conduct with them and to give them a real life experience. Fern Creek's orchestra is awesome. They're all, everybody's playing amazingly well and uh, really uh, going for the big picture questions of what it means to be a great artist and a musician. It's not just about playing the right notes at the right time. It's trying to make a great musical experience for audiences. That's what distinguishes a great musical performance from just any other musical performance that you might have to be uh, witnessing. And so everybody here was working so hard today to really try things. And these kind of different styles of music are, are far less important as styles than they are as being one language, one musical language. And everybody that, that cares about music and knows how powerful it is it has to unite. And we all have to use music for good. And we're going to count on every single person that cares about music to, to make sure that they use music as a force for good in, in the future. It's a way of bringing people together that's as powerful as anything else. I think the students loved it. I think they loved being challenged at a high level and they embraced it and responded quickly. And the uh, results were compelling. So at the end of the day, it was a great opportunity for the Fern Creek Orchestra students to work with the master. This won't be the last string plucked here at Fern Creek. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Brianna Lair. Let's take a moment to enjoy the sounds of the choir at Marion C. Moore. Thanks for watching our show. This is the crew from Fern Creek that helped put this show together. We hope you enjoyed it. You can find full episodes of Our Kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting Our Kids. Woo! <laughs>